Oh, and the Quran says that one day it's going to be plainly visible in the sky. I want to take you now tonight to the hadith which is in Sahih Bukhari. One hadith in Sahih Bukhari I have found. The hadith is in Sahih Muslim. I have found four. Four. All from Abu Huraira. So it is mutawatir. It is also muttafakun ali. So you can't come and tell me this is daif. No. In which the Prophet said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, that the river Euphrates, Furat, which is in Iraq, eh? the river Euphrates will uncover or disclose or reveal a mountain of gold a mountain of gold a mountain of gold from underneath the river a mountain of gold and people will fight over that gold and 99 out of every 100 would be killed number one no war in human history no war has killed 99 percent of combatants so this has to be a unique war in human history Secondly, it has to be a war using weapons of mass destruction. Normal weapons cannot kill 99%. No. Indicating that this would not be conventional warfare. No. This has to be nuclear warfare. For 99 of every 100 combatants to be killed. And therefore, we would be on fairly good foundations if we were to suggest that the Malhama would be fought for the mountain of gold. Those who will fight for the mountain of gold will all be saying, I would be the one who will survive. So of all the actors fighting over that goal, none of them knows who is going to survive. It's a guessing game. Can a mountain of the metal come out from underneath a river? So, that a mountain of gold will come out from underneath the river. Those of you who want to have tafsir, you can wait for a long, 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 long time. Huh? That one day, somebody will be there with a pan, 
and they will find a nugget of gold and that will be the sign that the mountain of gold is going to come out now from underneath the river if they want to wait I'm going to call them for the first time my Salafi critics the Salafi methodology is that only Allah and his messenger and the early Muslims are authorized to offer an interpretation so the Salafi and I'm not being disrespectful to them so they should not be annoyed with me I don't have any boxing gloves on the Salafi methodology will be you got to sit down and wait for the mountain of the metal from come out to come out from underneath the river because there is no interpretation given but we say no if you want to sit down and wait you can wait we have understood this to be mutashabiha and we say we have the right to interpret when we interpret however we must always say Allah knows best because we can be right we can be wrong this is our opinion you should not accept our opinion unless you are convinced that it is correct what more can I do but do I have the right to offer this interpretation try stopping me you won't succeed because the evidence is already here around the world around the world those who've been listening are accepting this opinion and not yours if they want to wait for a mountain of gold to come out of the river we say let them wait we're moving on this is Mutashar Bihad we are dealing here with religious symbolism and so we want to say tonight that we are not waiting for a mountain of the metal to come out from underneath the river and go up high into the sky no we recognize this to be religious symbolism but not everything is religious symbolism no when the prophet said Islam to Islam that Nabi Isa is coming back is that symbolic what nonsense no that's actual that's real when he said he's going to get married of course I hope he'll marry a Palestinian girl inshallah when he said he's going to get married he's going to have children is this symbolic no he said he's going to die he said he, you are going to pray over his body he said he's going to be buried next to me Vatican could say what they want the Pope could say what he wants so not all is symbolic no some is symbolic some some are symbolic some are not and you need spiritual insight to distinguish between the two it has to be subjected to ta'wil and when we subject it to ta'wil we say that that mountain of gold has already come and the fight for that mountain of gold is about to take place and that's the malama we say that something underneath the river in a vast quantity symbolized by a mountain is one day destined to function as gold and it's oil when oil functions as money the world will witness something called the petrodollar and I didn't understand that for 40 years I did not I have to confess tonight we say that it is an ocean of oil underneath the river which one day is destined to function as gold and that already happened 
that one day oil will function as gold. And that the monetary system which will be based on oil functioning as gold is one day going to be challenged. And that challenge is going to lead to the Malhama or the Great War, Armageddon, in which 99 out of every 100 will be killed. Malhama is what the Christians refer to as Armageddon. The great, great, great war, the big war, the war of all wars. One of the major signs of the last day, and you know that there are ten, the companions of the Prophet Wasallam were sitting talking amongst themselves, Hadith of Sahih Muslim, when he came and he asked, what are you talking about? And they said, we are talking about the signs of the last day, of the end time. And then he said, as only a prophet could say, the last day would not come until, and then he mentioned ten signs. These have come to be known as the major signs. Number four, Dukhan, smoke. And the Quran says that one day it's going to be plainly visible in the sky. <laughs> to turn to the smoke. A nuclear war would be one in which nuclear powers will use every single nuclear weapon that they possibly can use. Because it's going to be a fight to the finish. And so the world can now expect that if a nuclear war were to take place, excuse me, too late now to say if, rather it should be when the nuclear war takes place, when the nuclear war takes place, because they've already declared war on Russia. If you're living in France and Britain and in Western Europe and if you don't know that your leaders have declared war on Russia and the nuclear war is now inevitable and when that nuclear war takes place that thousands of nuclear weapons will explode. If you don't know that then you are living in dreamland. And if you hope to survive in Western Europe, you are also living in dreamland. That's the price you pay for having Zionist rulers ruling over you. That's the price. I hope you're listening to me, Europe. I hope you're listening to me in Europe. And I hope you're listening to me in the United States and Canada. That is the price that you will pay for having those ruling over you 
who are ruling on behalf of the Zionists, who are Zionists? Because they have declared war on Russia. And the nuclear war is now inevitable. When it does take place, then I want to suggest to you tonight that the mushroom clouds which come from nuclear explosions, which will probably blot out sunlight so that there will be no sunlight in the world. For how long? I don't know. The Christians speak of three days and three nights of no sunlight. But there's a hadith which speaks of 40. This is not my faith. I, am on, I want to suggest to you tonight, for you to think about it, that when the Prophet والسلام, spoke about smoke, dukhan, it's one of the signs of the last day that he was referring to the mushroom clouds which will come from nuclear war, the malhama. But the Prophet said that the Muslims who are present at that time should not touch the gold. Should not touch the gold. So if we obey the Prophet, والسلام, the implication would be Muslims would not be involved in fighting in the Malhama. The Malhama will involve others who are not Muslims or those Muslims who disobey the Prophet They will be part of the Malhama. So maybe that's good news for Malaysia and Indonesia. This, he, he would not be a part of the Malhama. If you study the world of money, I have this book, The Gold Dinar and Silver Dirham Islam and the Future of Money. We also have it in Bahasa. It will tell you something about how this money that we now use came into being. Where did this paper come from as money?